Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got a late night insight, a quick hit video on a new fragrance. And it's actually from the house of Zoologist and it is called Zoologist Tiger. So this was very kindly sent to me by my brother Hari. Uh, thank you, my friend. Allowing me to do this type of content is invaluable and I very much appreciate you sending me these uh, decants of stuff that I probably wouldn't be able to get my nose on for a long, long time. So I'm trying to sort of prioritize maybe the more um, popular fragrances or the ones that people want to hear about. You know, I'm always torn on the channel between wanting to talk about the stuff that I want to talk about. Like, for, I'll just give you a quick example. My scent of the day today uh, is a discontinued 1982 release from the house of Jean-Charles de Castelbajac. Just cannot say that guy's name without smiling. It is absolutely brilliant. Castelbajac. Um, and this is just the eponymous named Jean-Charles de Castelbajac from 1982 for men. Um, and what a brilliant bottle. Look at this. I know uh, I'm usually not sort of a packaging guy, but um, I'm a big fan. This is a vintage eau de toilette that I was able to secure for a very fair price. Um, it was really the only one I saw on eBay that would ship to America. So I got very lucky and I hunted this down. I wore this as my scent of the day and it's aldehydes, artemisia, juniper, basil, green notes, bergamot, cedarwood, geranium, sandalwood, carnation, patchouli, and pine with moss, castorium, frankincense, leather, musk, and tonka bean. So this is an absolutely brilliant fragrance. If you are somebody who likes the vintage fragrances like I like, uh, this has one foot in the 70s, one foot in the 80s. There's a little reminder of something like some of the Halston fragrances, but then it really brings in that 80s animalic castorium. If you were waiting to hear my sort of two cents on this, I can tell you that this is a winner. And so this is a great example of sort of the uh, dichotomy that I have in my brain. Half of me wants to do nothing but talk about stuff like this, but honestly, this is a very thankless job. Not that I care about... Um, subscribers or views or likes or anything like that, but it really is. It's a thankless job reviewing these fragrances that very few people care about. Um, and that's why I feel like I actually have, you know, the the wind at my back um, doing these type of videos because nobody does them. And then on the other side of the coin, there are, um, you know, people clamoring for these new releases and they want an opinion on this kind of thing that isn't somebody that's just going to say the same old, same old over and over and over. And I don't think you get so much of that with some of these brands. Like, I don't think Zoologist sends out free bottles or anything like that. They might, but I don't think he does. Um, he did send me a sample set, which I think that's perfect. I think a reviewer, even a two mil sample is enough for somebody to make up their mind. This is a one mil sample. And actually, this last time I put it on just half an hour ago, I dumped it all over myself accidentally. And so I'm drenched in Tiger and I still have some left. So this is, you know, you don't have to have a full bottle to make a educated opinion on a fragrance, in, in my opinion. Now, interestingly enough, speaking of somebody who is of two minds, I know that when Victor Wong first st started Zoologist and he got off the ground, right? And he started with some of the um, animals that were maybe a little bit uh, lesser uh, sought after, let's say, for somebody who thought, oh, he's going to make animal fragrances. I want him to make lion. And, you know, and then he started doing these off the wall animals, squid and moth and all this stuff. And he said, you know, Tyrannosaurus Rex, and he said he just didn't want to do what everyone expected. And tiger is actually one of the, um, one of the animals that people have requested him to do for a long, long time. So it's very interesting that uh, this came out in and the juice inside of the name is what it is because I think Victor Wong is also of two minds. I really like Victor Wong. Um, I like his work. I own a couple of zoologist fragrances that I bought with my own money. I have Moth, which is I think one of the most um, artistic. If you're someone who's looking for art in a bottle, this thing goes through like four transitions. It's extremely complex. And I think that this perfumer, uh, I think his name is Anuba Tamu. Um, and he's a Japanese perfumer. Fantastic. Attention to detail. Uh, very underrated to me. And uh, Moth is a brilliant fragrance. It came out in 2018. And this is the type of fragrance I sort of expect from the house. Lots of transitions, lots of changes, very complex, dark and, um, you know, uh, slightly spicy, but also floral, but also resinous and honey and oud and smoke and all this stuff in here. It's a crazy fragrance, but I love it. I love that type of perfumery. 
And when I'm spending a couple hundred bucks on a niche fragrance, okay, uh, that's the type of perfumery I expect, okay? And and so ditto with something like Camel. I really like Camel. I like the dried fruits. I like the incense. You know, that's that's the type of fragrance that um, that I would pay this type of money for, let's say. On the other side of the coin, you he has to sell bottles, right? And so some of the releases, and I actually have live streams on my channel and videos, so I've pretty much, uh, in one shape, form, or another, um, done a video on every single zoologist out there. There's only a handful that uh, I have not at least talked about in some respect. Even the new Harvest Mouse that came out earlier in the year, I have a video on that already. Um, and but, but they're not individual bit videos. They're actually sort of lumped together into a live stream. So you may have to sort of watch me testing a bunch of fragrances all at once, but I went through the entire sample set um, and sort of put my thoughts out there. And some of them I really like, like, uh, for example, I think Tyrannosaurus Rex and I think Sacred Scarab are two potential full bottle fragrances for me from the line that I haven't purchased yet. Uh, but I do have Discovery, 10 ml Discovery Atomizer, so that may be enough for me um, with such a large collection. And some of them I just thought were very um, uh, designerish in a way. You know, you, you could tell that uh, he was starting to put things out that sort of appeal more to the average person, let's say. Uh, and although Sacred Scarab did come out last year, and that was a very complex fragrance, I think that would have been the fragrance of 2022 had it not been for uh, Eugene's La Dulé Exquise from the brand Les Abstraites. That's that's my personal opinion. I think Les Abstraites was the, was the best release last year, and then uh, Sacred Scarab underneath it on this, you know, designer niche side, not counting any of the artisanal stuff. So, um, what is Tiger like? So, I remember I talked to Eugene about it because he got an early initial sniff because he lives up in up in Canada where Zoologist is based, so he gets to go to the headquarters, and he's done some live streams from there, and I remember he got an early sniff of it, and he said he really liked it, and so I was really excited to try this. So, let me read you the blurb, and then we'll talk a little bit about what I get from it. So, the perfumer is a, is a chap named uh, Cristiano... Canali, who has done some things that I am not very familiar with. The only one he has done that I know is B. He did B for Zoologist, which, um, well, I was going to grab the, let's see if I can find it real quick. Uh, yeah, yeah, here it is. Um, <clears throat> so he did Zoologist B right here. And, uh, I really like B. It's, a uh, it's almost like one of those fresher honey fragrances that you could wear in the summer. It's got a royal jelly note, which is the um, royal jelly is the um, is is the type of honey that they feed, I think, to the queen, if I'm not mistaken, and um, that's why it's called royal jelly. Uh, but it's a good fragrance, but it's not my favorite honey fragrance. Is the thing I like it, but I don't love it. I um, much prefer my more animalic style honeys from the '80s, Boss Number no. One and Tenere and stuff like that. So, um, this Cristiano Canali guy, uh, I don't have very much experience with the rest of his work. He did a, he did a fragrance for Mask Milano I've never smelled called Romanza. Uh, he did some fragrances for Rubini, which I've never smelled, and some other brand named My, Myconic. I've never smelled that, and Emperor Blue never smelled that brand at all. So, he's done some things, but I'm really not that familiar with his work. So, when I first put this on my skin... Instantly, a couple things hopped into my brain, and actually, let me read you the blurb first before I before I sort of give you my two cents on it. So here's the scoop, okay? So the frail glow of the waning moon dwindles until only impenetrable blackness persists across the grassland. A herd of deer venture tentatively into the expanse. Hope it's not zoologist deer. Through their long necks, Though their long necks dip to feed, their dainty legs remain tense, poised to flee. Nearby, gleaming gold eyes pierce the gloom, and silky ears stiffen, attuned to the softest tremor. The tiger advances haltingly, haltingly intent on its prey, anticipating a moment of vulnerability. In a seamless motion, it leaps and descends upon its victim, its razor-sharp fangs sinking deep into the deer's throat. As the deer's life fades, its herd is already gone, evaporating into the night. 
Like the thrill inspired by a low, rumbling growl cutting through silence, Zoologist Tiger couples danger with majesty. Vetiver's earthy body is licked with stripes of kumquat, saffron, and jasmine in an elegant pattern. Incense lurks at the edges, shrouded by smoky undertones of papyrus and ebony wood. Tiger arouses intrigue, putting those around you on high alert. So here's the note listing. Kumquat, cardamom, saffron, jasmine sambach, incense, carrot seeds, vetiver, ebony wood, and papyrus. And so what's interesting to me right off the bat is the fact that they highlighted vetiver because definitely, no doubt about it, is the very first thing I thought actually the first time I put it on my skin. And I wore this last night to bed, by the way. So this is the second time I've had a chance to wear it. But again, this is just an early impression video. So this is not, it's not like I have a full bottle and I've worn it every day. Uh, this is just sort of my two cents after a couple of wearings. But um, the very first thing I thought when I wore this is this is a vetiver heavy fragrance. There's no doubt about it. However, it's a vetiver scent um, that is slightly modernized, okay? So even though vetiver is the note they even chose to um, highlight in the, in the little blurb, there is other things going on, like I mentioned. So there is that um, kumquat. And actually, the kumquat is... One of the more distinguishing, I would say, features of this um, of this composition, because uh, kumquat basically is not a note that you come across every day in perfume, and it's supposed to have this very almost like sweet and sour type smell. This o o this sweet and sour odor that can sometimes come across as lemony and piney with some slightly bitter nuances. Okay, and. So when you first spray, you're sort of hit with that kumquat, the saffron, and some florals. And what ends up happening with the fragrance is it ends up probably half an hour or so in. You do pick up little nuances here and there, but uh, I'll tell you, instantly my brain went to a previous release. Instantly. I couldn't help it. Uh, it is very similar to me. I think it's very similar. And Victor Wong may disagree. He disagreed what I what, with what I said about Harvest Mouse. And that's fine. You know, everyone has their own opinion. Um, and again, I'm only working off of a tiny little decant here. But instantly my brain went to a previous release. And that's this. I don't know if you've smelled this before. Well, how could you answer if you have or not? You haven't. But this is Kenzo Jungle Porom. And Kenzo Jungle Porom is a Olivier Cresp creation. And um, this is probably one of the best designer spicy fragrances for men ever released, in my opinion. It's completely underrated. It's um, basically like spicy and woody, very similar scent profile to um, Tiger. And it's nutmeg, cinnamon, cedar, guyacwood, benzoin, mate tea, and, and a little bit of lime in the top. So you get the citrusy top, which kumquat sort of does in Tiger. And the fragrance really begins because of the way that sort of that spicy woody element of both fragrances comes along, probably about the half an hour mark. If you've smelled Kenzo Jungle Porom, uh, which by the way, this is discontinued, very sadly. Uh, I was able to secure an older bottle before um, they changed the packaging to the newest packaging. So this is a little older bottle. I don't know how much that matters with this fragrance. I've never smelled the new one. But um, this is a very underrated spicy woody fragrance. And I think I paid like 25 bucks for this or 30 bucks or something. Um, and so, you know, a fragrance that is a niche fragrance coming out, um, you want to smell something new and you want to smell something different. And so instantly I was like, oh, this is sort of a, a designer-esque release and it smells like an LVMH. And it really, you know, if I close my eyes, this really does smell like an LVMH. Like it smells like this could be like if Francois Demachy was creating a Dior Privé that tried to sort of copy the smell of, of Kenzo Jungle Pour, Pour, Pour Homme, that's what I could sort of expect um, Tiger to smell like. It, it has that feel about it. You know you know how they did Spice Blend and it was supposed, supposed to smell like Spice Bomb and they sort of did their own twist? That's what Tiger smells like to me. And But the thing about it is, to be fair to the fragrance, I like it. I do like it. And I understand exactly why Eugene said... He enjoyed, he enjoyed getting to smell it because you do get some elements here that you will not get in, um, you will not get in, uh, Kenzo Jungle, Porom. 
So the first thing you're going to get is this um, carrot seed. And basically, carrot seed has this ability to have this um, powdery earthiness that almost mimics, almost mimics the smell of iris. And there are some brilliant carrot seed fragrances out there, but one of my all-time favorites that no one talks about really is this, or very few people talk about. I shouldn't say no one, because uh, Zhao from Scented Moments talks about this a lot, but this is Loewe 001 Man. This is a fantastic take. If you like Dior Homme, uh, this is sort of Loewe's take on Dior Homme, but with a little bit of, um, of carrot seed instead of iris, okay? So you're going to pick up on that, and it is evident. Probably within the first half an hour to an hour, you'll be able to pick up the carrot seed note. And that carrot seed note just sort of adds this nice little powdery elegance. I've often said that, um, you know, I've often said that iris adds this 3D aspect to a fragrance. And carrot seed, it sort of uh, mimics the iris, if you will. Um, some say carrot seed is a little cheaper note to work with. I know it's a cheaper note to work with, but it still smells brilliant in this fragrance. And the other thing that you will notice uh, is this slight frankincense, this incense -y vibe, this wispy incense. And it blends with the papyrus note. And papyrus is a note that I really enjoy. If you like the papyrus in um, things like Javoy's Private Label, if you like that sort of heavy, earthy, deep papyrus in uh, Gucci Pour Homme 1 from 2003, which I absolutely love, cherish my last 10 or 20 mil, however much I have left of that, uh, that kind of papyrus heavy note is really what I was hoping to get from this. And when I started to get the incense about half an hour in, um, and I went for a run, by the way, after putting this on, I, I applied it earlier this evening and also again just now before the video, and I wore it yesterday. Um, and so when I went for a run today, I um, once my skin really started to heat up, I started to pick up some of that incense, that frankincense, and the carrot seed, and I was like, okay, this is really starting to show me some things. Maybe this is sort of a, maybe this is sort of a, um, you know, a fragrance that's hot and cold. It, it's a moody fragrance, you know, depending on your skin, depending on whether you're moving or inside, and a lot of fragrances have that, but um, whenever I reapply and I'm just sitting down, it goes very quickly straight to that Kenzo Jungle Pour Homme. I didn't get as much of the um, intricacies and detail as much on, on the reapply I did right before this video. And also the papyrus, I was really hoping it for it to go dark. You know, I was hoping for it to go that deep, rich, you know, papyrus note um, that is earthy. And it, it just, it, well, it, is, it isn't there. Uh, they say that there's ebony in, in the base. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what type of wood is in the base here, but I can tell you, unfortunately, the reason that I'm a little bit eh on this release is that um, it just goes half an hour to 45 minutes in. It really just starts smelling like this to my nose, honestly, is what it is. And this is a fragrance I paid 30 bucks for max. I think it was even 25. Uh, but I did get this years ago, I think before it got discontinued. So this may be harder for you to find, although I think there's still a lot of bottles floating around. So the pros and cons to me are... If you're someone newer to the fragrance game, and let's say you want a step up in quality from the designers, like I said, I think this smells a little bit like a Dior Privé. It smells good, um, but is it going to excite the fragrance enthusiasts? And it's funny because before this even came out, and as Victor Wong was sort of listening to my, uh, sometimes he'd jump on the live stream with me and all that stuff, and as he was start starting to get my to know my taste, he said, you're not going to like Tiger. And I was like, dang, the notes look great though. It looks like I would. Um, and you know, he, he was right in the sense that I, um, it's not that I don't like it. It's just that I don't think it is worthy of a zoologist release. If that makes sense. I sort of hold zoologists in a little higher regard because they were a house that was doing something different. And, you know, they were sort of like M. back in the day. Those, those were two houses that were all about art in a bottle. And this is not art in a bottle for me. This is designer style juice in a niche bottle, unfortunately. I hate to say that, but it, but it's the truth. Uh, to my nose, it's the truth, again. And I don't think anyone's ever right. When we just get up here and proselytize about fragrance for hours and, you know, we can just go on these soapbox rants and get all impassionate and all this stuff. And, you know, the reality of the situation is no one's right. 
everyone, you smell with your nose, I smell with my nose, you know, the other person smells with his nose, and the other person smells with her nose, and we could all have four different opinions, and we could all be right, because you're the only one smelling with your nose, and I'm the only one smelling with mine. So, um, you know, that's sort of the, that's sort of the thing about this, is this is just my opinion. Obviously, there will be people who will disagree, there will be people who agree, but um, to me, this is sort of one of those releases where I feel like this is an animal that people have been waiting for him to do for so long, and this could have been one where they really, um, you know, showcase their uh, artistic ability and all of this stuff, because Tiger, I think, really got people, they're like, it's like if he ever does Lion, um, you know, I think people are going to just flock to that, because it's an animal they've been waiting for for so long, but unfortunately, this was a little bit of a dud. This is an old, this is an old tiger who's being fed steaks in the zoo and doesn't have to hunt, you know, he, he just sort of walks around and scares the little kid on the other side of the glass by roaring and then goes and takes a nap, um, which is unfortunate, but you know, that's how it goes, and that's how a lot of the new releases are nowadays. I'm not disappointed. I just, um, it's because it is kind of what I expected, especially after I heard Victor Wong say, you're not going to like it. Um, uh, it, 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 maybe if there was more animalics in here, maybe if there was something like that going on, but, you know, with the tiger, I just expect something fierce and, and, uh, dangerous, and this is none of that. This is just very calm, easygoing, spicy, woody scent that I would just wear Kenzo Jungle's uh, poor Ohm, honestly, unfortunately. Uh, it is interesting, though, that Kenzo Jungle was also based on an animal. Um, this is supposed to be like a zebra's mane, and, um, you know, the Kenzo Jungle line is actually a damn good line, and it's a shame LVMH came in, and they just, God, they just cannot help themselves. LVMH buys a house like Kenzo, and they just come in and just absolutely lay waste. They just ruin the house, in my opinion. Uh, and, and so it's, it's a shame that that is discontinued as I really think that was a great, cheap, spicy fragrance that you could just buy at, at any shop instead of paying 175 bucks for, for something like this. This is still good and it's probably a little bit more nuanced, but is it worth $175? No, it is not. Uh, I would say on the full bottle list for me still would be Sacred Scarab. I need to review these. I need to get around to doing the reviews of the ones I really like, like Sacred Scarab is fantastic. Um. I really like Sultan Pasha's work. I um I wish I could smell more of his pure guitars. And then Tyrannosaurus Rex. I think this is uh, Antonio Gardoni's best work. Yeah, this is his best his best fragrance in my opinion. Um, but I like these type of perfumes. So so yes, that is my uh, just quick hit late night uh, video on Tiger. If you've had a chance to smell it yet. Do let me know. I know these type of reviews are kind of really sought after by the community because they're new and sometimes it's hard to sample this kind of stuff and stuff like that. So again, special shout out to Hari for sending this little decant my way. I really enjoyed getting to, to know it. Um, but unfortunately, this will not be a full bottle purchase for me. I probably won't pursue it any further at all. But if you have any experience with Tiger, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do leave it in the comments below. So thanks everybody. I kind of feel like a pitcher coming at, off of like a a big win from my 4,000 subscriber video today. I'm just like, ugh, I got the hat. I, got, You know, it's Sunday. I'm like, I'm rehabbing, doing just a one quick hit video. But I'll be back tomorrow probably with a list or something like that. But uh, it's always a pleasure, guys and gals. Thanks for the support, everyone. Cheers. Catch you next time. Bye-bye.